Spring MVC provides us with some very great support for JSON. If you've been building web applications, you know that more and more functionality is moving into the browser. And as we work in the browser more, we are relying upon JSON as the format where we really exchange a lot of our information with the server via AJAX requests. So within Spring MVC, the Jackson library is leveraged in order to provide some really great JSON support that's easy to configure. In this lesson, we're going to run a demonstration that takes a look at how we can quickly enable Jackson support in order to send JSON to the client. So we're first going to look at our dispatcher servlet.xml, and you'll notice that our content negotiating view resolver has been removed from our dispatcher servlet.xml file. We saw how we could render JSON using the accept header or the .json extension, but there was a rather costly setup with that content negotiating view resolver. So we're going to take a look at a little bit more simple way to provide that functionality. And the first thing we need to do is we need to add the Jackson databind artifact to our pom.xml file. So I'm just going to go to the pom file, click on the add button, and then I'm going to pull in the Jackson databind artifact. And I'm actually going to reduce my version to 2.5.4. The other one we were looking at was a release candidate. And then I'm just going to click on that artifact, go to properties, and I'm going to adjust to a type of jar. Okay, so at this point, Jackson is now on our class path. And that is really the key to all this, is Spring is smart enough to realize Jackson's on our class path. And because of that, it makes some assumptions. So let's talk about what those assumptions are. If we navigate to our resource controller, we're going to set up a controller handler method that is going to service requests that come from our resources page. So if you go to resources and click on find, you're going to get this list of resources. And you'll notice here that the links are structured like forward slash resource and then forward slash and then the ID of that resource. So we're going to build a controller handler method that will render JSON for a particular resource. So let's navigate back to the resource controller and we're going to set up a new controller handler method. So we're going to set up the request mapping annotation and we're going to simply map to a resource ID path variable. And then we're going to build our method. So we want to make it public and it's actually going to return a resource and we'll just call this find resource. And we need to add the path variable annotation. We'll specify the name of the path variable is resource ID. It's going to be of type long and we will name it resource ID. So there's our argument that we're passing in. And then we need to return an instance of the resource. And you'll notice that I have auto wired a mocked resource service into this controller for our use. So I can just call service dot find and then pass in our resource ID. And we just need to import our path variable annotation. And at this point we have our controller handler method set up to return a resource. But at this point, it will not be returned as JSON. There's only one additional thing we need to do. We need to have Jackson on the class path, and then we simply need to add the response body annotation. And that's it. We don't have to set up that heavy configuration for the content negotiating view resolver just by some given defaults within Spring MVC that are enabled by the MVC annotation driven tag and having Jackson on the class path and using this response body annotation on our controller handler method, we will now serve Jason from this mapping we have to our controller. So let's restart our server and then we'll run a demonstration to see some of that Jason. So we'll navigate back to the browser and I'm just going to go in, hit resources, then hit find. And now I'm just going to click on one of these links and it's going to pass the request back to that controller handler method we just worked on. 
And it's a little bit rough, but we're going to get some JSON then sent to our browser. So normally we would be invoking that controller handler method using AJAX, most likely with jQuery, and we'd be receiving that response back within our JavaScript and working with it. But that's really not the point of this demonstration. It's more to show you how to get that quick JSON support via Springs Jackson configuration and how easy it is.